Here we will look at one of the ways to estimate freezing time in foods. Uh, this approach was uh, developed by Planck in uh, 1913 uh, who developed an equation to calculate freezing time for water. Uh, his method yields a simple equation although it has uh, several limitations as we will discuss later. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Planck's method does provide us with an equation that may be used to determine freezing time with either a spreadsheet or a calculator. Uh, this uh, development that we will see in this module uh, is also useful to gain an insight of the heat transfer mechanisms that are relevant to freezing of foods. Now Planck's equation involves a number of assumptions. Let's first look at those. The first assumption is that heat transfer in the food is one-dimensional. Two, initial temperature of food is uniform. In other words, there are no variations uh, at the beginning of the process in terms of temperature inside the food. Uh, freezing is accomplished using uh, freezing air temperature that is constant. So again, no variation in the freezing air temperature. The uh, latent heat of fusion is removed at a constant temperature. Planck also assumed that the properties of food are constant above the freezing point and they are different but again constant below the freezing point. So Planck does not account for the changing food properties with temperature in the sub-zero range as we have seen in one of the previous uh, tutorials. And Planck also assumed that heat transfer within the food is by conduction only. So we will note that the first assumption that heat transfer is one-dimensional means that we are looking at, for example, heat transfer in a very thin slab. So heat transfer is only along one of the dimensions of that slab. And the uniform temperature initially is uh, Tf or the freezing point and the uh, freezing air temperature is Ta. Uh, typically in commercial freezers uh, minus 40 degrees C is used as the freezing air temperature and latent heat removal is at that constant temperature of Tf. Now we will look at the implications of these uh, preceding assumptions uh, because the outer surface of the food is cooled by air the mode of heat transfer at the surface is due to convection. Uh, the two modes, conduction and convection, define the heat transfer mechanism uh, inside and outside of the food. The uh, cold air is at a constant temperature Ta. Typically it's around minus 40 degrees C. So the difference between the temperature of the product and the surrounding air temperature it is what provides the uh, required temperature gradient that promotes heat transfer from the solid food into air. Now Planck assumed that food is initially at a uniform temperature equivalent to its initial freezing point Tf. Uh, therefore the uh, mathematical calculations will ignore any removal of sensible heat necessary to lower the temperature of a food from uh, some ambient temperature to the initial freezing point. A one-dimensional heat transfer implies that the object being frozen is an infinitely large slab. Uh, that is only one dimension of the rectangular slab is fixed while all other dimensions extend to infinity. Uh, as shown here in this uh, figure, uh, this could represent for example a liquid food poured into a wide thin tray and then placed in a freezer. Uh, we also encounter one-dimensional heat transfer in a sphere uh, as well as in an infinitely long cylinder. Uh, note that an infinitely long cylinder is a cylinder of finite diameter but infinitely long. Uh, heat transfer in an infinite cylinder will be only along the radial direction uh, 
and not along the axis. Uh, so this could be, for example, a very thin sausage uh, that may be frozen, uh, where Planck's equation can be used then to predict the uh, freezing time. With these assumptions, we will now look at a schematic representation of a rectangular slab of food at a uniform initial temperature of Tf that is frozen from both sides. So as you can see in this animation, we have the freezing front moving from the sides to the center. Again, note that heat transfer is only in one dimension. So we can draw this schematic and uh, the green lines will show the presence of the freezing front at some point in time. And we also show that all other dimensions extend to infinity because this is a one dimensional slab. The uh, thickness of one of the dimensions then along which the heat transfer is taking place, uh, that thickness is A and the distance that the freezing front has moved from the surface towards the center uh, is expressed by X. The uh, temperature at the freezing front is Tf, that is the initial freezing point and the surrounding temperature is Ta, that's the temperature of the freezing air. The uh, thermal conductivity of the frozen region is Kf and the convective heat transfer coefficient on the surface of the slab is H and we will draw the thermal resistance circuit as you saw in one of the earlier uh, modules in heat transfer. So we have two resistances to consider. One will be through the frozen layer and the other through the outer uh, layer in the air. Uh, so the temperature varies from Tf to Ta and the thermal resistance for the frozen layer is X over Kfa and for the convective layer is 1 over Ha. Uh, you may want to refer to the uh, a tutorial on thermal resistances. So then we can write Q equals the temperature gradient which is Tf minus Ta divided by 1 over A x over Kf plus 1 over H. In other words the denominator is the thermal resistance. Now we can rearrange some of the terms. So we can write Q equals A times Tf minus Ta divided by 1 over H plus X over Kf. Now at the freezing front, water undergoes a change of phase into ice. The change of phase is accompanied by the release of latent heat of fusion, L. The rate at which latent heat is removed when the freezing front is moving with a velocity dx over dt then is Q equals AL rho F, rho F is the density of the frozen layer times dx over dt. dx over dt is the velocity of the freezing front. Now both values of the rate of heat transfer must equal because whatever heat is generated at the freezing front has to be transferred through the frozen layer into the outside air. So we equate these two expressions and we have al rho f dx over dt equals a Tf minus Ta divided by 1 over H plus X over Kf. Now the area terms cancel out. Now to solve this equation, uh, we will use our method of separating the variables. The variables are X and time, T. So we will take dt on the left hand side and integrate from 0 to T. And on the right hand side, we will be left with some of the constant terms like latent heat, rho F, Tf minus Ta and then we will have the integral. Inside the integral we have 1 over H plus X over Kf and the integral is evaluated from 0 to the half thickness because once the freezing front reaches the center the slab will be frozen because from both sides the freezing front is approaching the center. So the limit is uh, 0 to A by 2. Next we integrate and uh, integral of dt of course is t and we have L rho f divided by Tf minus Ta and also substituting the, the limits we have A over 2h 
plus a square over 8 times kf. Note that the integral of x will be x square by 2 and when we substitute the limit, uh, the upper limit a by 2, we will have a square over 8 uh, times kf. Now we can modify our expression to adapt it for a food material of known moisture content Assuming that the moisture content of the food is MW and noting that only water will undergo a phase change during freezing, uh, nothing really happens to anything else other than just a drop in temperature. So we calculate a modified latent heat for the food LF equals MW times L and then in our equation we will substitute instead of L we will replace it with LF that will be the latent heat for the food times the uh, density rho for frozen food divided by Tf minus Ta. In the parentheses, this time we will make this equation general and we will write P times A over H plus R A square over Kf. Where P and R are the geometric constants for different shapes of objects used in driving Planck's equation. Note that we drive this equation for an infinite slab where the value for P is 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 and the value of R is 1 over 8 or 0 0.125. And similarly, if we had drive the Planck's equation for an infinite cylinder, then the value of P will be 0 0.25 the value of R will be 0 0.0625 and similarly if we had obtained this expression for a sphere the P and R values will be as shown here. So we can make some observations here from this equation that if the convective heat transfer coefficient increases then the time for freezing will decrease. In other words if we use forced convection during freezing the time for freezing will decrease. Similarly, if we decrease the surrounding temperature, then the time for freezing will decrease, which makes sense. If our freezing air temperature is lowered, then certainly we will be able to freeze faster. And also, we will note that if the value of A, which is the thickness of the slab, if that increases, then the time for freezing will also increase. Note that since we have A square, the impact of the change in the thickness is very profound on the time for freezing. So a slight increase in the size of our product can result in longer periods of freezing. In terms of limitations, note that in Planck's equation, there is no reference of the initial temperature. Planck assumed that the initial temperature of the product is the freezing point. However, in commercial freezing, uh, we always begin freezing a product uh, could be ambient temperature. So Planck's equation does not account for the time required to lower the temperature from some ambient temperature to the freezing point. Similarly, as you notice here in the equation, there is no final temperature of the product. So Planck's equation only gives you the time for the latent heat removal. It does not tell us anything about the sensible heat removal after the product is frozen. Also note that rho f and k f are constants. As we saw in one of the previous modules, the density and thermal conductivity of a food change during the freezing process. So Planck's equation does not account for that variation of properties with temperature. Despite those limitations, Planck's equation still gives us reasonably good values of freezing time uh, that can be used in uh, commercial operations.